Hey, thank you so much for watching. I'm Pippi Peterson. So lately, there has been a lot of uh, buzz going on about this, uh, what do you call it, I guess, regulation. This uh, government regulation by that, that is being proposed by HUD, which, is, which stands for Housing and Urban Development. And so HUD has a, um, what do they have? <laughs> they have a manufactured home program, and then that like department in HUD, their, their uh, manufactured home program, has regulations and procedures. And uh, so HUD, or this particular branch of HUD, is proposing uh, a new regulation, and uh, they've got it online, it's on regulations.gov, and you can find that link in the description of this video, so you can go directly there and read it. However, it's like full of uh, uh, legalese jargon, and uh, I I've probably read it like maybe ten times just trying to understand it. So this is kind of what I'm understanding it to mean. So first of all, there are uh, manufactured homes, and then there are uh, park model. RVs. Park models are, are these guys. They're like a trailer because they have a trailer piece on the front, but they're more permanent. So they're, in a way, they're kind of between RVs or your traditional like motorhomes and uh, fifth wheels and trailers. They're kind of between that and manufactured homes. And so somehow, uh, I'm guessing uh, uh, there was like one particular instance or something where somebody that owns a park model was trying to get some sort of uh, procedural or regulation enforcement for their home that they maybe thought that they were uh, considered a manufactured home. And this is, this is just a guess, you know, how this came about. So then uh, HUD probably recognized that there's some ambiguity between what a park model RV actually is. Is it a manufactured home or is it more considered a RV? Well, a lot of the ones that are being considered are these park models that have permanent structures kind of built around, like a, um, a lot of people call them Arizona rooms, or they've got the patios with the covered roofs and stuff, so it actually makes their square footage bigger than 400 square feet. And so I'm thinking that makes it fall or seem to fall in the category of a manufactured home. So uh, now you have uh, uh, people who are owning these park models that are kind of in the middle trying to say that they have a manufactured home, not a park model or RV. Well, um, for some greedy reasons, I'm assuming, again, this is an assumption, for somebody's greedy reasons, which often uh, start these uh, legal regulations and stuff, uh, HUD is wanting to call park models RVs, plain RVs, not manufactured homes, no matter if they've got these patios or not that kind of give them a uh, larger square footage. So then, when they call these RVs, uh, that means that HUD kind of doesn't have to deal with them. And uh, by calling them um, uh, RVs, now the HUD can enforce that those people owning the park models can't live in them full time. That they're not supposed to be full time structures or domiciles. Well, that doesn't just affect the people with the park model RVs. It affects everybody who has an RV. Everybody who has a trailer, RV, uh, motorhome, fifth wheeler, uh, all those are gonna be clumped into one. And because HUD wants to somehow attack these owners of these park models, everybody else at the other end of the spectrum is getting the butt end of it, which is going to be a new regulation saying that you can't live in these RVs full time and they're not meant to be. Uh, and now they want to pass like certifications to make it more official that, you know, uh, certain things would, you know, certain RVs would have to be certified and stuff like this. So uh, they're not only uh, screwing the people who own uh, park models and probably screwing them out of so many uh, 
benefits and legal things that they thought that they would be entitled to if they were considered mobile homes or manufactured homes, but they're uh, screwing everybody else out. But not just that, they're, uh, that's also going to affect everybody who owns an RV park because a lot of RV parks have full-time residents. Well, they're full-time residents in, in RVs, uh, motorhomes, fifth wheelers, trailers, park models, and all sorts of uh, tiny homes, all sorts of uh, uh, stuff like that. So anybody who's living there full time, they're not going to be legal to do that. So that means that uh, RV parks and uh, uh, trailer parks or mobile home parks are going to be screwed as well because their current uh, uh, residents are gonna have to like leave for six months of the year or whatever screwy law they're gonna put up however long and so that uh, really uh, ruins the business for all of those uh, park owners and um, managers and uh, also a lot of these mobile home owners um, they own some of the park models that are in their parks and then they'll rent them out well, they're also going to be screwed on that because now they can't rent those models out full time, which a lot of them are. They're like, you know, senior citizens and uh, uh, handicapped, you know, disabled uh, people that aren't going to be able to live there. And always, or not always, but almost always, these are like the cheaper ways to live. So these people who can't work anymore, that are retired, you know, that, uh, kind of need the lower income they're they're going to be like uh, illegal <laughs> to, to do what they're doing right now and which is kind of the only way that they're able to survive so this is not a great regulation it really benefits manufacturers of mobile homes or manufactured homes so now that then the manufactured home or yeah uh, man, manufactured homes companies you know that manufacture these and uh, make them and all that everybody related in that 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 kind of uh, uh, lifts them up in a little more like elite class than uh, park models and RVs so this is really benefiting them and uh, somehow they're in the back pocket of HUD and working together to kind of screw over a large number of uh, population so um, this could make people become homeless. It could make uh, very well law-abiding, really willfully law-abiding citizens uh, outlaws. You know, we could, they could be doing illegal things now, and uh, it's just absolutely uh, screwy for the majority of the people. So um, right now, the only thing that I can see, and again, I'm not, I'm not a lawyer. I. This is my interpretation of it, of what I've read that's publicly available. And what I can see, the only thing that can be done right now is that you add your voice and comment on the regulations.gov website. And you can either go to regulations.gov and you know find it in the, the list of regulations or whatever they got going on. Or you can look in the uh, description of this video and get the direct link and go there. And there's a blue button it says comment now and um, I, I think that's all it can be done right now if, if there can be anything more done and you know that please uh, comment in this video you know comment on there other things that other people can do because um, it's uh, not a great uh, effect I mean not just for everybody who's going to be directly impacted but you know when you've got like um, you know couple million people who are going to be going homeless that's not that's all that also will affect people who won't be going homeless and there's going I mean when you got big changes up like that it doesn't just affect the people being affected because really we are all in this together and if uh, if so many people go homeless the people who don't go homeless are going to be impacted in some way or another so please go to regulations.gov and comment and um, you know, try not to get too worked up about it because things have a way of working out and um, uh, maybe they'll see with enough opinions and voices that this isn't really the thing that, sh that they should be doing. So thanks so much for watching and um, things are working out. <laughs>